Hey folks, and welcome to the channel. We are out here today in lovely Utah to drive this, the brand new Ford Ranger Raptor. And yes, now the Raptor family is complete. You got the big F-150, the Bronco, and now the Ranger. And we're gonna find out how it handles here on an off-road course, and we're gonna jump it, so make sure you stay tuned. Now I can take you for a quick walk around this Ranger Raptor as well to point out some of the differences from a stock Ranger. First of all, the look, you're getting that big F-O-R-D Ford grille right up front. That is unique to this truck. And then as we move down, a set of nice exposed tow hooks, which obviously are always good. And then a nice skid plate right up there in front. And I love how that skid plate is tucked right up underneath the bumper there. That, uh, that shows that it really does mean business. So yeah, the looks of the truck are unique. Couple cool decals on the truck that we're running today as well. And then you get to the running boards back here. I like these, they spray them in this bed liner kind of material, so they are really protected. But the real key with any off-road truck, if you do have a step, you want it to be tucked up. You don't want it to be hanging down low and getting in the way. And a bunch of the standard Rangers, I noticed the steps really do hang down, whereas this one, it is nice and tucked up under the truck. So that shouldn't get hung up. And then the fact that it's protected, it will act like a little bit of a rock rail for you as well. Now, as we come around to the rear end, again, Raptor graphic down the side, these cool kind of race decals. Uh, we can talk about the bed. So we do have a damped tailgate here, which is nice. Now, just like the regular Ranger, the Raptor's only available in this configuration, which is short foot, or short bed, I should say. That's a five foot bed with the crew cab. But you do get some okay features in this bed. You're getting three hard tie down points, one here, one sort of in this center position, and then one up there at the front of the box. I definitely always appreciate having more tie downs. And then we can kind of trade positions here. Over here, you're also getting power in your bed. This little power bank, if I can find it, here it is. So 12 volt power plus 400 watt proper plug, which is great. And one of the big enhancements to this bed in my mind is the fact that there is now just over 48 inches between the wheel wells. So the classic question of will a four by eight sheet of plywood fit in here? The answer is now yes, at least width wise, length wise, yeah, it's gonna hang out over the tailgate, but that is what it is. Now, speaking on the tailgate, they have added the ruler along the edge. So if you need to measure things, but what I think is neater than that, C-clamp pockets, so you can actually hold things down to this tailgate. And then the final little touch right over here, that is a bottle opener on the side of your tailgate for when you're out here enjoying some non-alcoholic beverages. Looking down low here again, a nice set of big exposed tow hooks. Great for pulling this truck out or for this truck to pull something else out when you get stuck. Plus dual exhaust back here on your rear end. Now, of course, this is still a truck, so it can tow. Tow rating here, just over 5,000 pounds. And then the payload rating on this truck as it sits, is just over 1,300 pounds which honestly for an off-road focused truck and one that can be so amazing once you especially pick up the speeds, that's a really good payload number. And payload in my head is one of the biggest advantages now for going for any Ranger because every Ranger I've driven, a new Ranger, has had an excellent payload level. So I really appreciate that from Ford. Let me spit out the off-road numbers at you now. So overall running ground clearance on this truck, you're talking about 10.7 inches. The approach angle is 33 degrees, departure is 26.4 degrees, and breakover angle is 24.2 degrees. And then the curb weight on this truck is 5,000. 
325 pounds, which does make it the lightest of the Raptor family. Alrighty folks, time to start the fun stuff. We're out here with the Ranger Raptor on what they're calling the handling course. Now right now I've got it in off-road mode and let's go. <laughs> and the power feels great. So again, off-road mode should allow me. Yes, the power feels so good. Now what I was gonna say is it should allow my rear end to step out just a little bit. There's the apex, oh, a little wide on that one. Full brake. First impression right off the bat though is man, does the power feel good. Nice quick shifts, nice downshift there. Hard brake into this gravel corner. Throw my back end around. Oh, pushing wide <laughs> and full stop. <laughs> wow. So that was first run in off-road mode. Power felt really good. Nice crisp shifts. And then in off-road mode, uh, it was allowing the back end to just start to step out a little bit, but still keeping it controlled, which was awesome. And now we're actually gonna switch up our driving mode and then do it again. And I'll uh, be able to tell you what that's like once we're in full Baja. So like you said, now we're in Baja mode, folks. So it is great to feel the differences. The stability control is all tuned differently in Baja mode. I should be even more, allowing even more slip to get a little looser. And then I expect the power to maybe be a, be a bit better as well. Um, plus, of course, we just have the active exhaust on this truck. So now we're gonna have the Baja exhaust on. So it should also just uh, sound a little bit more aggressive too. So I'm excited to feel this one. All right, back on the course. It's just a short little handling course, a couple nice corners to feel it though. So here comes Baja mode. Let's feel the difference. Oh, it does sound aggressive and the power does even feel a little bit better. Now let's apex here, roll it on, coming out of the corner, full, full throttle, full brake, turn in, throttle out. Man, the powertrain feels so good oh little wide there nice slide there counter steer needed this is a gravel turn in so it should really chuck me wide yes 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 <laughs> full brake <laughs> well folks i think hopefully you can tell by me screaming how much fun that is and yeah, even in Baja mode, it's letting me step out. It's letting the rear end come out. It's letting the truck be loose, but it's still doing a nice job of, of still catching you sort of on the extremes. And uh, yeah, the powertrain feels so good. That's just the first thing I still can't get over. And then this is an obvious point, but it needs to be made. I'll make it at this point in the video. Mid-size trucks, these things are just so well suited for off-roading, whether it's high speed, low speed, doesn't matter. Compared to that Raptor, this thing feels so manageable and lightweight. Whereas the Raptor, you know, you just can't, or I keep calling it the Raptor, the F-150 Raptor, you can't disguise how big and heavy that truck is compared to this little Ranger. So yeah, this thing just feels so right-sized to be doing this kind of stuff out here today. All right, folks, now we're on what they're calling the Baja course pretty decent little off-road race course they built here for us and we're in Baja mode let's go so the brakes feel really good turn in is super aggressive and that's the beauty of such a lightweight truck is having that nice light turn in Baja mode lets the back end start stepping out Nice, better. And the power is immediate. The shifts are aggressive, but always feels like the power is exactly where you want it to be. There's the hairpin. Another tight one right here. But yeah, the, the size of this thing and the weight of it. Here's a full throttle corner. It just feels so good. And the track today, quite frankly, it's been cold. So the dirt is fairly hard. It's letting me slide a little bit, not as much as I know it would. <laughs> but man, it makes me feel like a, a hero out here. Just cause I know Baja Mode's letting me drive it like I want, but in the background, it's still working to make sure I don't absolutely blow it. Now here comes a G out, full speed, full throttle. Woo! <laughs> there goes the mic again. 
But that's the beauty of those adaptive dampers coming off there. They're, they're going to go to full stiff the second they feel like the truck's off the ground. Landing there. It was, you know, a tough-ish landing, but didn't feel like anywhere close to bottoming out. And uh, that's the beauty of it. So, yeah, doing stuff like that, man, it's so exciting. Um, you definitely need to find a closed course to do the kind of stuff we're doing here today. At least that's the safest way to do it. But uh, so far, Ranger Raptor is feeling so good. All right, folks, here we go. Jump in the Ranger Raptor. Jump in it, jump in it, jump in it, and hello! <laughs> I think I lifted a little early, maybe. Well, what can you say? Uh, jumping is fun, feels incredible. This jump was designed by Ford, so they knew exactly what they were getting us into to make sure they could show off the truck. But anytime, you know, all the wheels leave the ground, the key is what's the landing going to be like? And the landing is firm, but the beauty of it is how controlled it is. You hit, it absorbs, the truck doesn't suddenly bounce back, you don't get this crazy rebound, it's just whoosh and go and uh, and that's the beauty of it and again if you are racing in the desert or just running really hard you're probably going to have moments where you do end up uh, lifting some tires off the ground whether it's all four or just two and uh, yeah it feels really good for that and, and again come back to the adaptive suspension the fact that the truck knows it's in the air and then can stiffen up those dampers to absolutely catch you on the other end is uh, is truly it's pretty impressive well, Justin, we appreciate you having us out here to drive this uh, incredible truck. And I know you came a long way for this, so we appreciate that too. <laughs> um, so I think the, the big question we want to answer is, so what has changed on a Raptor compared to a regular Ranger? And I know it's a lot, so let's try it to is a lot. So the, we'll, the we'll try and not take 45 minutes here, but <laughs> it, it's a lot. If we start at the front of the car, everything basically between the wheel arches is, is fundamentally the same. So the chassis rails are very much similar between the Ranger and, and the Raptor. Mm -hmm. But then everything else around it is very different. So um, if we start with the track, and I like that it's Canadian so I can talk millimetres. Yeah, love it. So um, then we push the track out by um, 90 millimetres over a standard Ford Ranger. Um, that gives you a lot of opportunity to do things around you know, handling and, and ride and stuff like that. So I'll get into a bit of that. Um, we don't cheat it with wheel offset. So we do it all in architectural elements. Okay. So front upper control arms and lower control arms are all forged aluminum. And we do that to basically reduce unsprung mass. But if we look at sort of moving our way to the back of the car, mm. we've obviously got a Watts link uh, in this truck versus leaf sprung on the standard Ranger, sure. which is even different again to the Bronco, which runs a Panhard, right? Got it. Um, and, and those architectural elements are all chosen to sort of fit within the character of the vehicle. You know, we didn't design this truck to be a smaller facsimile copy of an F-150. Mm -hmm. We've designed it specifically to be its own thing um, and to have its own character and presence. Yeah. So this car, and you experienced it out there today, is, is pretty dynamic when it comes to handling, right? So fast steering, um, it's got uh, a lot of balance and a lot of ability to rotate the rear end around the front um, axle. Would you say, just on that point, is it size and weight that are sort of the biggest differences where you said, because those are so different, we want this to, to handle differently? Because it has different inherent it's, characteristics. It's got a lot, off, right? right? Yeah, so, so all, of that, how, all of that sort of dictates a lot of the, the um, I'll call it system selection components, right? Okay. So things like your dampers. Uh, on this, it's a two and a half. And people might say, well, why, why don't you have the Fox 3.0s that are out, yeah. of the, out of the Bronco? The, the reason is really simple. It's, it's not because we've downgraded the tech just to fit this, the car weighs 280 kilos less than what a Bronco Raptor weighs. So when you're dealing with that much mass, you need a thicker, wider damper to mm -hmm. deal with the dissipation, right? Mm -hmm. A car that's much, or sorry, a truck that's mm -hmm. much lighter, um, you don't need as big of a damper bore to be able to manage it. And if you did do it, you'd end up with a car that'd be pretty awful to drive because sure. the compression and the rebounding would all be correct, exactly right. Yeah, interesting. So how about, uh, let's talk powertrain, because I know that's unique here too. Yeah, so it, unique to the Ranger, but very much shared with the Bronco Raptor. Sure. The same three liter uh, twin turbo V6 as the Bronco Raptor, using a slightly different state of tune. So we mm -hmm. have five, sorry, 405 brake horsepower and mm -hmm. 430 foot pound of torque. Mm -hmm. uh, the Bronco Raptor's got 418 and 430 foot pound. So it's a little bit different between the two, but very much um, the same installation, cooling packs and whatnot that the two vehicles share. And then uh, talk me through the tires, because I know, you know, people are going to ask, why didn't you go 35? So, yeah, you know. yeah, no, good question. So um, one of the things we wanted to prioritize on this car was wheel travel. Sure. Um, to fit 35s on this vehicle, sure, you know, if you're doing it in your backyard, you could probably get 35s under there, but you're going to be sacrificing wheel travel. Yeah. Um, 
we don't want to put things like spacer plates or shot collars or anything like that to to change the um the height of it changing the angle and the rake of the vehicle really impacts the way the car handles mm -hmm. so we've wanted to make sure that we're managing the right and sort of protecting the, the wheel travel as much as we can which is up on a standard um Ranger as well. It's uh, 41 millimeters more at the front and 26 more millimeters at the back in, at the back. in relative travel. Nice. So I, I'd love if you could speak a little more to the Watts link because yep. I think a lot of people don't understand it. So can you just tell me, you know, what's the benefits of, of changing up the, the geometry yeah. and architecture back so there? So if we come back to the principle of the vehicle, which was to make it a, a dynamically handling vehicle, mm. um, a Watts link enables a lot of like lateral control and also vertical control. So if you've got a panhard, when the wheels go up into the arch, they in invariably get a little bit of camber gain. With a panhard, uh, sorry, with a Watts link, it basically, the wheel travel, the wheel travel is consistent, right? Ah, okay. So when you're relative to when we were out there today, sure. the car's moving around and sliding on its rear axle, you're not getting any, you know, weird toe and geometry changes from the back. Got it, and that right. was it. It did feel very controllable, even compared to the other Raptors yeah. out there. Just precise, I think yeah. is the best word. So that's right? a combination of wheelbase yeah. and also the, the rear geometry. Sure. So, so finally, um, I think it's interesting that this truck was developed so much in Australia. Yeah. Um, so can you just speak to sort of the development process, what you think is different maybe that would mm. be done in Australia and maybe some of just the off-road culture because I know it's so strong there and how that would sort of play a part in, in giving us this amazing new Raptor. Yeah, so maybe I'll start with what's actually the same. So um, when you design a Ford Performance a Raptor, it still has to do the same Raptor thing. So mm -hmm. we don't get any leeway because we're the smallest Raptor of the three. Mm -hmm. um, we still have to do the 1200 miles of endurance desert running. Mm -hmm. um, and we back that up by running it at Baja in 2022 and, and finishing and um, taking our class out. And then we took that same truck and ran it at the Fink Desert Race in Australia, which cool. is like the biggest desert race in Australia. And that same truck then won its class there as well. So. You know, we, we've ticked off the credibility stuff by, mm -hmm. by publicly showing that. Um, from a, what's different in Australia, the terrain is a little bit different. So when we're doing that desert testing, we are in the middle of the outback, right? Yeah. So red dust, um, a lot of soft sand, mm. and a lot of, you know, I'll call it fast speed whoops, right? So we, we want to really make sure the car works on those terrain. Sure. Sure. I think that's it, man. That's amazing. Actually, you know what? I got one last one for you. Yeah. Do you have one favorite thing about this truck? Is there one thing that just really stands out to you? Yeah. One part, one system. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of the steering on this truck. Okay. It runs a bespoke rack. Yeah. Um, so it's completely different to the Ranger as well. Yeah. And it's a fast rack. So, you know, having a car that's a body on frame, but handles like this, mm -hmm. like, I'm so proud of the guys that, who, that did that. It was one of the things when I first drove it, I was like, wow, like, They've really clocked this and nice. just makes my life easy. It's noticeable. Well, yeah. thanks, man. We appreciate it. No problem. It. Thanks. Thanks again. And now, folks, we're out here on the off-road course. So keep in mind one thing. Everything you're going to see in this video, Ranger Raptor owners are going to be able to do when they come out here to the Assault School. So that's sort of one of the neat things is that if you buy one of these trucks, you're really going to get some professional instruction. And, and I think it's a big deal. If you don't do this at all, you get a really good sense for what your truck can do. Even if you do this all the time, like me, I'm always happy to learn more. And every time I'm out here with these pros, I learn something. So it really is a valuable experience experience and, uh, and plus it's gorgeous here so that doesn't hurt either being able to come up to somewhere so beautiful here in Utah. So we're on a bit of a rock crawl course here uh, still mostly dirt but with lots of sort of exposed rocks. And as I said and you guys just heard that's the key right you have a, a radio in each truck and the lead truck is instructing you on when to lock up, what mode to be in. So again, if you're, if you're totally novice, you don't have to worry, you can show up here and they're gonna tell you exactly what to do. It's a great program. And you know what? Ford has done this for quite a while with the Mustangs. They've done it with F-150, they've done it with Bronco, and now with Ranger Raptor. And it's something I absolutely believe in. The capability of these vehicles has gotten so incredible that most people can't extract all of that capability. So having someone again tell you what to do is great. So yeah, I'm about to lock up because we're just gonna go up this rock crawl. It's another thing I've noticed is the lockers here are lightning quick. You hit those lock buttons and boom, they lock up. Now on the downside, the lockers are only accessible through the screen. 
I don't love that. I wish there was a physical locker button because if you click off of this screen, then you got to go back to the off-road screen and find your lockers. It's a little thing. It works fine. But yeah, there's some things I think should be kept on a physical button and the lockers is one of them. So this is one of the more extreme rock crawling moments of the trail. So let's see uh, how it feels. So this is where your camera comes in handy. Because I can no longer see the trail, but I can watch over here, see where my tires are going. We do have the truck down in four low. Uh, the gear reduction feels great, power feels good. And even though it's a turbocharged engine, you still get fairly linear power, pretty easy to modulate. I think the one thing I am noticing though, especially because it's the 10 speed, the shift from first to second happens a lot and then second to third even. So the truck is kind of shifting quite a bit down in four low. And every now and then that can be just a little unsettling when you don't sort of expect it. And because it's the 10 speed, I feel like it shifts a little more than some other trucks in low. So we're coming down a hill. We do have trail control, but I want to use four low locked in first gear, which I can do in manual mode. Let's just feel the old school hill descent, just straight gearing. So this is not trail control, straight gearing, four low first gear. <laughs> and it's really good. Two miles an hour right now. Yeah, if I turned on trail control, it would actually speed us up right now, which is, uh, yeah, that's really good low gearing, which is nice. So let's try it on the fly. Activate trail control, press the set buttons up to four and a half miles per hour. And yeah, the trail control is gonna run us faster than just the straight gearing was. And uh, of course, coming down a hill, you wanna stay nice and controlled, nice and slow. And the gearing was doing that beautifully, but trail control does a really nice job as well. Trail control, for those of you that don't know, this is Ford's off-road cruise control system. It's going to control the throttle, the braking for you, so you basically forget about your feet, focus on your hands. Um, I think one of the advantages is trail control and most of these systems can generally do things that the driver straight up can't, such as, you know, breaking one individual wheel, stuff like that. So using it as a tool, at least that's how I look at it, it's not a bad system. I will say, and I say this about all these systems too, it's not that fun. It's, it kind of defeats the purpose of being out here because you want to felt like feel like you tackled the trail, not just the truck's computer brain did it for you. So, uh, yeah, these systems are, are great. They work well. But I also think that I personally, if I owned the truck and I was out here, I don't see myself using trail control unless I was miserably stuck and I thought maybe it could do something that I can't to uh, help me get out. speed now and the more I run this truck the more I just am impressed by the, the turn in the bite out of the front end <laughs> on what is you know loose surface gravel and rocks and sand wow you turn it and the front end just goes exactly where you point it um, even compared again to the bigger Raptors the the Bronco and the and the F-150 you just don't have to wrestle with this truck quite as much to get it to do exactly what you want handling wise and uh, and sure it'll still step out and get loose and you can still slide it around and have a lot of fun but yeah that what I'm really feeling is just the the weight of it the suspension everything lends itself to this precise you know knife edge handling which frankly feels so good. I keep feeling like I'm gonna push wide and then I just crank the steering wheel over and the truck just turns. It absolutely turns every single time. I keep thinking I'm gonna be blowing a corner and the truck keeps saving me. So you know what? I think I'm an okay driver, but more so than that, the Ranger Raptor is making me feel like a hero out here because of uh, just how sharp it handles. Well, folks, you know it's the end of the day because we're off dirt and back onto the asphalt. But you know what, I said this earlier in the video and I'm gonna say it again, the, there's just no compromise now. You go off road, the thing absolutely swallows up every obstacle you can find, run it at speed, it feels great, rock crawling felt good. And then I come back on the asphalt and it's a normal, nice driving pickup truck. So you know what, more so than some other trucks, but also following the trend, 
you truly can have it all these days, and this Ranger Raptor proves that. Plus, you just can't argue with the fact that this is the most powerful off-road mid-size truck on the market without any hybrids needed. And uh, yeah, it's, it's absolutely impressive. I'm excited for all the owners to get out here and give the Ranger Raptor Assault School a try because we had a great time out here today. So yeah, that's it for this one, folks. Now please go below, leave us that comment, let me know what you think of the truck and everything you saw out here today. If you're gonna buy one, well, ask your questions. I'm happy to answer them about the school. And uh, then, as always, don't forget to go below, hit like, hit subscribe, hit join to become a member, and then come right back here to Truck Gig to see what we're testing.